Look what I've got! Hey friends! My name is Desiree aka Mama Friendly and I do all sorts of videos on my channel from cooking videos to planner videos, vlogs, hauls, homeschool videos with a Disney twist, a little bit of everything. So if any of that sounds like fun to you, I hope that you'll subscribe and join me on this YouTube adventure. Today's video is the long-awaited 2022 to 2023 homeschool curriculum haul. I've been doing these videos every year for the last two or three years, and so in case you're coming back to see this year's edition, welcome back to the channel. In case you are new to my channel, like I said, my name is Desiree, and I have one little boy. He is about to be 11 years old, and he has nonverbal autism. We've homeschooled his entire life, and we find that it's the easiest way to make sure that his needs are met while still providing him an environment that's rich in learning and helping him in his day-to-day -day living skills, which are my priority before academics. So we do focus on academic subjects, but for the most part, I'm more interested in his daily living skills, things like cooking, um, language acquisition, counting as far as like you need to be able to count in order to use money. So those sorts of things, the things that are gonna help him become more independent later in life, those foundational skills that we need for those activities, that's my focus in homeschool. The other great thing about homeschooling is that it affords us the opportunity to take everything at his pace. So some things might not be what you would consider grade level, and that's totally fine because we're meeting him where he's at. If he has an easier time with a certain subject or learning something a particular way, we can do it his way instead of trying to like beat it into him the way that he's supposed to learn it. As long as he's doing it at the end of the day, it's just a means to an end. That being said, my son loves all things Disney, like loves Disney. The apple did not fall far from the tree. In particular, we are big fans of the Disney parks. Now, if you are new to my channel, you might not know that for the last two years, we've been doing Disney homeschool videos on this channel, and the videos have been themed around different movies, characters, or rides. There are 40, 50? videos in that playlist, there's a lot, plenty to pick from if you want to do an entire year's worth of curriculum, for sure. So if you want to see that playlist, I'm going to post it up here and it's also going to be linked down below in the description box of this video. Because we've already done so many Disney movies and characters, I wanted to kind of switch it up a little bit this year, but I wanted to maintain a Disney theme because it's what keeps my son's interest. So what's more fun? learning to read or learning to read Disney books? What's more fun, learning math or learning math with a Disney twist? It's always gonna be Disney. Disney's always gonna be the answer. So this year, what I'm going to attempt to do is to kind of build our curriculum around a particular Disney park. And the park that I've chosen for this year is Epcot. Epcot affords us a lot of opportunities for learning. In particular, I'm going to be focusing this year on the World Showcase. Now, I'm saying this year because depending on how this goes and depending on the sort of research that I'm able to do and like if I can even really make it happen, I would love to expand this. Like maybe next year we'll focus on the Magic Kingdom and I'll see how I can integrate our learning activities that way. Animal Kingdom would be another great way to center our activities. I don't know if I can fit a whole year's worth of curriculum out of Animal Kingdom, but I'm up for the challenge. So if this sort of thing is interesting to you, I hope that you'll subscribe and stick around because not even I know what I'm going to come up with next. That being the case, like I said, my focus this year is going to be on Epcot World Showcase. And if you're not familiar with Epcot, there's a whole like maybe two thirds of the park that's just dedicated to different pavilions. Each of these pavilions represents a different country or area of the world. They're extremely richly themed, like from the architecture to the food and drinks you can find in any given pavilion. Even the cast members that work at the pavilions are typically from the country that's being represented. So you might hear the language, you can have them, you know, hopefully teach you a phrase here or there if that's something that's interesting to you. So I was thinking that every month this year, 
we might choose a specific pavilion to focus on and we could learn about that pavilion or that country that it represents rather, their culture, their foods, their style of dress, their art, their architecture, etc. When I frame up a lesson plan, regardless of what the theme is, I always like to have a little mix of academics, some sort of an art activity so that we get some hands-on and sensory kind of input. And I also really like to do a themed food of some kind because again, life skills are super important to me. And when kids cook their own food, they're likelier to be curious about tasting it. There's also a lot of math and science involved with cooking, uh, of course, it's a study in the culture as well. So there's a lot that can be gleaned from cooking. As such, every month I'm gonna bring you a video regarding these different themed pavilions and these different themed plants. And I'm gonna try my best to include at least one art activity and at least one recipe, which is the same structure I've used for all of my Disney homeschool videos so far. The other twist, in case you didn't know or in case you're new to the channel, my son and I both eat gluten and dairy free. So even if we're going to be doing a traditional food, I will explain to you how traditionally the food is made. But when we make it ourselves, we're going to be making it with gluten and dairy free substitutions because there's no point in cooking a food that we can't actually eat. So again, if you're not gluten and dairy free, you can still follow along because I'm going to explain to you how it would be traditionally made with its regular ingredients. And so you can have a true to life experience of that culture's food. But for our needs, we are gonna make substitutions. And so if you're already gluten and dairy free, all the better for you because you don't have to worry about coming up with the swaps yourself. We're gonna show you how we're going to make it. So I think I've set it up enough and there's a lot of materials that I'm looking forward to using this year. So I'm going to jump right in and show you guys the stuff that I've got. Um, where I'm able, I'm going to link the products in the description box below because some things, um, might not be as easy to find or I might not be able to find them online. Um, so you can try your best to like Google and see if you can find uh, an appropriate substitute. But most of these things I dare say I got on Amazon. So if I'm able to find the links, I'll post them down below. And that way, if you wanna use these materials yourself, you'll know where to find them. So the first thing, speaking of cooking, I have this book called The Unofficial Disney Parks Epcot Cookbook. So this whole book is specifically Epcot recipes. And as you can imagine, a lot of the recipes are to do with the World Showcase and with the specific countries and pavilions represented therein. So we're gonna be getting a lot of inspiration for our monthly recipes from this book. It's not to say that every month I'll feature a recipe from this book, but there's a good chance that we're going to be doing that because I don't wanna do all of the recipes necessarily from the park itself, or do I? I guess that remains to be seen, but I do wanna make sure that each culture, each country has a food representing it. So this is gonna be one of the jumping off points for that. Another book that I've got here is called Global Art. And again, this book, I'm gonna link it down below because I know for sure I got it on Amazon. And it has all sorts of different arts and crafts projects, hands-on things that you and the kiddos can make. And the index actually breaks it down by country. So I'm going to be using this to help supplement our art activities throughout the school year. I believe, oh no, there's way more books, but this is another one. This one's called Cooking Class Global Feast. And I've actually had this book for a while. And once again, this is recipes that are inspired by different countries, but this book in particular is geared towards children. So if you have kiddos that are more prolific readers or kiddos that are more independent in the kitchen, then with some supervision, they might even be able to make some of these recipes on their own. So there's another thing to consider. Now we've got some Spanish language materials here because, sorry, I keep going off screen because I've got all my stuff over here. Um, my son and I, well, I'm a native Spanish speaker. I didn't learn to speak English until I started school actually when I was almost five years old. So even though my son is nonverbal, like I said, he is being raised 
not even bilingually, I guess trilingually, because we also do American Sign Language. He actually gets more sign language than he does Spanish, but it can't hurt to hear the Spanish tongue. Um, studies have shown that hearing a, a, a language, especially when you're younger, helps you to form connections in your brain that make it easier not only to remember the language and understand it, but also when speaking it. There are certain like the roll of the tongue, for example, in Spanish, the rrr, if you don't grow up making that sound, it's a lot more difficult as an adult to learn to do it. So I have some Spanish speaking materials here. This early Spanish language workbook, it's supposed to be appropriate for grades one to three. I've had this for ages and I actually got it at the Target dollar spot. So this, unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to link, but I'm sure there's thousands of books just like this one if you look online. We have a little PIM dvd series i just have the one dvd here but it's actually a series of six dvds and it's this little panda bear and he talks to you in all sorts of different languages this one like i said is in spanish we also have mandarin chinese and french um, but that's not going to be our focus this year and then we've got this spanish beginner songbook and it came with flashcards. So together it's like a system that you're supposed to be able to use to pick up the language through music. My son loves music. It's another one of those portals, as I call them, where, like Disney, where I know that he's interested enough in that, that if I bridge that with something else, that something else suddenly becomes more interesting. So something like Spanish or math concepts or sight words or whatever. If I'm introducing it with music, it suddenly becomes a lot more palatable and a lot more interesting. So that's where this comes in. Now, as far as learning English, right? Continuing our regular English language studies. My son really loves the alphabet, letters, writing, reading. He's, um, what's known as hyperlexic. So he's got language, even if he doesn't have verbal communication. And he's always been, even when he was teeny tiny, like I'm talking toddler status, he's always been very into the alphabet, labeling letters. He knew what order they go in. He also has an incredible memory for sequences and patterns. So we try to take advantage of that where we can, right? That interest in letters, we use it to our advantage to teach different subjects. So I have here, Spelling you see, and I have both the teacher's edition and the student's edition, because it's basically a situation of, I take the words in here and say them to him so that he can write them out in this book. With that, he's practicing phonetic recognition. So he's practicing hearing the word and knowing what that word sounds like and how that translates to spelling and writing. He's practicing, of course, his penmanship. And um, it's also gonna widen his vocabulary, right? Because we can also talk about what the words mean rather than just him memorizing how they're written. Sight word daily. My son absolutely loves sight words. I credit preschool prep for that. I've talked about their program before in these types of homeschool videos. If you have younger kids or kids that are just now getting into concepts like numbers, vowels, even phonetic things like digraphs, great program. I'll try to link them down uh, in the description box as well. But this sight word daily is exactly that. It's an activity journal. It um, spans 35 weeks. Every week there's three words that you can focus on and it teaches you not only to write them but also to recognize them which is going to be helpful for reading later. So I thought that he'd enjoy that. I'm not really looking at this as something that's going to be a teaching tool necessarily because he's very familiar with sight words but more so like something fun for him which sounds kind of unhinged but it's true <laughs> we have this hooked on phonics learn to read system and i actually got both level one and two so level one is meant for early emergent readers level two is meant for kids that are like in first and second grade so i've got both programs ready to go because i'm expecting that we're going to get through one maybe in the first half of the year, and we'll get through the second one towards the end of the year. So we are prepared for that. We've never used Hooked on Phonics before. If you have, I'd love to hear your experience on it because I know it's been a very popular program for a very long time. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna try it out this year. If you guys wanna hear our experience on it, 
stay tuned because I'm sure I'm bound to review it at some point. And then the last workbook I have here, I think, uh, because I actually have two boxes worth of materials that I haven't even opened yet, is this Children Around the World, The Ultimate Class Field Trip. It's 14 countries and it talks about exploring languages and cultures of children across the globe. So again, I'm not planning to go through the entire book necessarily, but wherever there's like, for example, there's Jamaica in here and Jamaica is not part of the World Showcase. So I probably won't do Jamaica as part of this year's curriculum, but who knows what next year has in store. However, this has Japan, it's got China, it's got Mexico, and those are all countries that we are planning to cover this year. So we will do those pages when it relates to that month that we're doing that particular country. And whatever we don't get around to, maybe we'll do over the summer. I also got these, not a book obviously, but <laughs> it was in the bin. These are the Crayola washable markers and it's eight skin tone multicultural colors. So I thought that this was great. I don't have any specific plan for them just yet, but I figure in our art activities, it'll be nice to have all these different colors for different skin tones. So there's that. I'll make sure to link these down below as well. And now we're getting into the boxes. So like I said, it's two boxes of stuff that I've got here. And one of them, this first one is from Rainbow Resource. All right, got the box open. Rainbow Resource Center is one of my favorite homeschool websites. Um, they have all sorts of things for kiddos of different ages, different abilities. And so I frequent them a lot. And so what I have here, <laughs> I actually kind of forgot what a lot of this stuff is because I ordered it a while ago. So I've got a book that is National Geographic on Walt Disney himself. Um, so this is for level three fluent reader, which is the highest level they have for reading. I'm not expecting kiddo to read this to himself. Um, I'm probably gonna be reading it to him. But as you can see, even though it's meant for prolific readers or fluent readers, the text is still nice and big. So it's easy to read. It's easy for the kiddo to feel accomplished because they got through the whole book themselves easily. And this just touches on his life, his growing up, how he started the company, the first few movies like Snow White. So I thought this would be cool for us to read just in general, but it fits the Disney theming, right? This I also thought was fun just for like a general art project. It's kind of like gingerbread men, but made of, is this felt? It's construction paper, but you can only see the one, the top of the stack, but if you see right there, there's a bunch of them and they are also all sorts of different skin tones. So I just thought that that was a fun thing to have on hand. We've got, oh boy, he's gonna love this. My son loves puzzles, loves puzzles. That's another one of those portals to learning. If I can get a puzzle with like every subject on it somehow, I would be set because he's he just loves puzzles so much. They make everything so much more fun and interesting. So I have this big old floor puzzle. And as you can see, it's a map of the whole world. It's like basically a globe, but flattened out. And this has how many pieces? 48 pieces, which is very manageable, but it's gonna be nice and big. So it's gonna allow us to see all the detail. I'm trying to show it to you guys without the light reflecting on it too much. But yeah, he's gonna love this. So I'm very much looking forward to sharing that with him. The last thing I have in this box is kind of silly, but I'm also really, really excited about it. I got my son a passport, a little fake passport. It's just blank pages inside. But we've got a little passport and then a bunch of flag stickers so that as we go through all the different countries all year long, we can stamp our passport is that not the cutest thing? I know it's silly and it's not really educational, has nothing to do with anything, but I just thought it was adorable. So I could not resist. So we have these now. And that's going to bring us to the very last box, which is also the very biggest box. So obviously there's a lot of like geography happening this year, a lot of social studies. Geography is actually great because it covers both social studies and sciences. But again, like that's not, super duper my focus. If he gleans any of this information that I'm giving him about all these countries and cultures, then obviously all the better, right? Because that's what you'd want. You want your kiddos to learn as much as they're able. But at the end of the day, the most important thing to me is that he enjoys the lessons, he enjoys learning. 
because learning is a lifelong event and you don't want it to be associated with ick. You know, but also as long as I know that I'm exposing him to these new ideas every day and he's coming away with more sensory integration, more um, more of a grasp on the language concepts and mathematical concepts that I know are already there at their base and he's practicing his life skills like counting, reading and cooking, then I think the year is a success. So there's only a couple things in this box, which is good, I guess, because considering it was such a big box, I expected a bunch of tiny things. So first things first, we have this Social Studies Instant Learning Center, and it's meant for multiple children to use, but we're just gonna use it on our very lonesome. And pretty much, it's kind of like a game where you can pick cards out of a bag and they're divided up by countries and it shows you all sorts of facts from the different countries so like games that they play the foods that they eat their customs and traditions and their clothing which obviously all of these things are what make up the culture so again i don't know if i'm necessarily going to use all of them or if i'm just going to go through and pick out the ones that pertain to that month's country at any given time just to not kind of muddy things up but it's nice to have all of those cards there in reserve so that maybe I can invent something to do with them later on. And lastly, we've got this Cultures of the World theme box. So it brings an activity guide, children around the world photo cards, homes around the world photo cards. I think that's super interesting to see how different places build their homes in the architecture. A world globe, it brings flags, it brings clogs, like Dutch clogs a Japanese paper fan, a maraca, an African woven rattle. So there's different things pertaining to different countries. Not every country is represented, but it is gonna help kind of supplement. That's the word I'm looking for. It's gonna help supplement whatever lesson plan I come up with for any of these given countries that we might discover in our school year. So I think this is super, super cool. I definitely feel like we have enough materials right now, but of course, if I come up with something, a particular art project, for example, and I need specific things for that project, I'll let you know about it in the video that pertains because as I mentioned, this is video one, just kind of setting things up. But next month we'll pop into like our actual school year and it'll be the first video of the curriculum, which if I'm not mistaken, should be Mexico because I'm actually gonna go in order of the World Showcase in Epcot. And I don't know about you, I know it's like a hot topic, but I personally always go left and start in Mexico. So that's what we're gonna do for our school year as well. I know that there's other subscription services like Kiwi Crate or in particular Little Passports has to do with geography and customs, social studies, etc. The problem that I have with Little Passports is that it is a monthly subscription and you don't choose what countries are coming. So it might not always line up with the country that I already have in mind. And so that being the case, I decided not to opt for that this year, but that is a possibility for you if you decide you wanna follow along and maybe do the countries out of order or whatever the case may be, that is definitely something that you could consider using for your school year. So that's it, that's everything I have so far. That's the plan that I have going for the year ahead. I know for sure my son's gonna have fun and that's half the battle. I'm really looking forward to seeing how much he learns and grows this year. And yeah, I would love to answer any questions that you guys might have if I didn't cover something in particular, just let me know in the comments. Like I said, I'm gonna do my best to link everything that I can find online in the description box below, but if there's something in particular I showed you and you're having a hard time finding it, let me know that too, and I'll try to figure out how I can direct you the best way to find it yourself. But yeah, that's that. I hope you guys are as excited for this curriculum as I am. And I want to thank you so much for being here and watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, I hope that you will please give it a big thumbs up. I'd also love it if you would subscribe and click that notification bell because I post at least three times a week. I'm looking forward to sharing all of this stuff with you coming up soon and I wouldn't want you to miss a minute. Thanks so much again for watching. See you real soon.